Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Through the Scope, the podcast where we take a look at some of the best of CSGO's news and results over the past week. Once again joining me is Cake or Thomas. Hello, and this is also the podcast where we irresponsibly drink alcohol at the wrong time of day. Yeah, apparently that's the thing, so uh, I don't drink myself, but clearly you do. Yeah, so I full warning, um, apologies in advance if I get progressively more drunk during the podcast <laughs> nice uh so i kind of wanted to start with the ranking update all right and go like back from 30 to first and like just talk about the team and stuff and some of the results mm-hmm. this is the hr tv rankings i assume you're talking about yeah yep okay and i just realized i don't have all the right pages open <laughs> You're supposed right. to do this before we start. <laughs> <laughs> I had one of the right pages up, and I needed a second one. Uh, so, 30th place is Movie Star Riders. Okay, no surprise there. Yeah, uh, yeah too, so. Too their IGL is Steel, by the way. Brazilian Steel. Wait, oh, Brazilian Steel. Okay, yeah. I thought you were saying, like, x side Bypower Steel. No, no, <laughs> no, not Canadian Steel. Oh, dear. Um, yeah, so he left Brazil to go to Spain. Hmm. And they haven't done too bad. They came 11th in Rotorio. Well, that's not too bad. That's actually a pretty decent result, especially for a Tier 2 team. Yeah. Um, and against, against like, local teams, they've done really well. Giants is, like, one of the biggest names in the Iberian scene, and they 2 0 them recently. Bad. Also, like ele- again, eleventh place in Rotorio. That's like a sort of spot you you could expect Nip or G two currently to be punching for. Yeah, they're uh, the signs look good with uh, Steel in charge. Hmm. Yeah, maybe they'll become a tier one team. Maybe in the near future. And of course, they've got Lowell as well, who played for was it Hellraisers? Oh, sorry, which players? Lowell. I uh, believe so. Yeah. Before Reason, they yeah. Uh, dropped their EU roster to sign a CIS roster and completely killed their entire momentum. Yeah. Yeah, that's a bit. That's a bit. Another one of those dumb. Uh, what was the one we talked about last week, where th- that one t- uh, or completely disbanded its entire roster, even though it was like half decent. Um, I, I remember it was speaking. Like Mongolian... Was it Mon- was it one of the Mongolian rosters? Might have been. <laughs> I've just forgotten a lot of last week, to be honest. The whole yeah. all the days are starting to merge together in Don't lockdown. What I have for breakfast. <laughs> uh, so riders are up ten places from last month. Okay, okay. So that is a, that is a big improvement. Yeah. Twenty uh, ninth place is Hard Legion. Yep, okay. They're, they're the ones that have that uh, Roman Spartan helmet thing as their logo. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. they were originally Dream Ears. Yep. Uh, they came third in their Rotorio in CIS. Third? Third. Wow. Yep. Uh, also on their, on their rankings, it's going down to like the CIS minor for 2.4% of the rankings. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, so seven point two percent of the rankings comes from the Berlin major, where they came fifteenth to sixteenth. It's commendable, to be fair. Making it into that would be—is it the quarterfinals? Would that be then? No, uh, that'd be eight. No, it'd be, it'd be before that. It'd be no, like right at the end of the group stages. Yeah, that's the um, legends. Yeah. Uh, what you call it? Stage Swiss group stage. That's it. Yeah, they would have made it to the end of that that group stage, and then they would have gone out right before the quarters. Yeah, they've got um, three fifty-sixth results in here as well. Decent, decent. But they beat they two old Navi during Rotorio. Oh, that was the upset. Yeah, yep. And yeah, they they two won VP twice as well. They're basically an entire roster of Stewie TKs. They're online. <laughs> 
apparently, I was uh, I was looking at some like the info on them, and apparently a couple of their players changed their nationality from Ukrainian to Russian when Crimea was annexed. Wow. Okay. Politics all of a sudden. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I just I just found that a little bit interesting that that happened in the night. We're Russian now. <laughs> Uh, vodka cheaper bleed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're up 21 places from last month. Wow, that, again, another big jump. Yeah, I, I think part of the reason why it's such a big jump is because they dropped one of their players and they brought in Rage. And Rage was like a fairly unknown entity before joining this team. I mean, he's still an unknown entity to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's their opera. He's Ukrainian. Okay. Another Ukrainian opera. So, same as simple as Gu and Guardian, basically. Yeah, I think he's similar age to Simple, actually. I think he's like 22. Ah. Okay, another young star. Yeah. Uh, 28 is Windstrike. Okay, yeah. Uh, is so Oh, Windstrike. Uh, who is their IGL again? I remember we talked about this last week. Um, I want to say it's Hobbit, but I don't know. Yeah, it, it was like one roster that just uh, kind of left one org and then joined Windstrike, wasn't it? It was like an entire like switch over. Well, that that did ha that did happen a while ago with Quantum Battle Fire, but they haven't like this roster's been around for a while now. Because mm -hmm. that was where Boomich came from. Team yeah, Navi. no, of course. Yeah, Boomich went to win strike, and he was like gelling there, and then he went to Navi after that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's currently the lineup is Bondic, Hobbit, Chrism, Lackey, and Elian. Mhm. Mm Primarily Kazakh. Okay. Wait, does does Hobbit IGL? Uh, he did. Yeah, yeah, no, he does now because he was um, being tutored by Zeus during the um, the lead up to the twenty nineteen major that they won. Uh, I don't, I don't know why. Sometimes I confuse like uh, Bondic and Angel. Yeah, I think it's because of the ones in their names. Yeah, there, there are some um, Hellraisers together. Yeah, I do remember that. Yeah. Uh, so... Bit ironic, uh, having a handle like Angel and playing on Hellraisers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they came second in the CIS Road to Rio. Okay. And uh, for some reason it shows the We Play Forge of Masters Season 2 Finals, which they came 7th to 8th. That counts. <laughs> I have never even heard of that. Composition. Uh, okay, so it had Forts, Tricked, Gambit Youngsters, Godsent, Gamer Legion, Copenhagen Flames, and Heretics. Some big names in there, to be fair. Yeah, this is before uh, the Mad Lions lineup joined Mad Lions and was still Tricked as well. Yeah. So, uh, there's some names in there. Hmm. Oh, this is when David P was uh, on Heretics. The old 3D Max IGL. There's another name I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's Belgian. Uh, where's that? So, Windstrike are up five places from last month. Okay, so still every team has improved so far? Yeah, and that stops now because this team has stayed in the same place since last month. Ah. Uh, this is where the uh, downward spiral begins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Heroic is the team. Oh, okay. That's in 25th, is that? Uh, 27th. 27th. Oof. That's rough. <laughs> Especially uh, for a roster like that. Although, from, from the uh, inside info I have, there is a new uh, Dutch legend in this lineup. All right, uh, Cadian. Oh. Uh, basically, 
during the DreamHack Open Rotterdam tournament last year. Yeah. Uh, Kajun was really involved with the crowd and was uh, being really energetic when they did really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it became a little bit of a um, little bit of a legend for the Dutch Post fans. Uh, but Cos Heroic wasn't at the Road to Rio. They, they, wait, they weren't at Road to Rio? They didn't partake in Road to Rio. Oh, so I guess they're just foregoing this next major. Uh, and, well... Uh... The CS Summit has been announced. Uh, yeah, they're in the qualifiers for the next event. Okay. So I, I guess they just don't have high hopes for the major. They're just trying to take in the crumbs of the pie rather than a big slice. Possibly, yeah. Uh, of course, they were in DreamHack as well, weren't they? Where they, um... They lost uh... to Astralis G2 and then beat North. Yep. So, so they stayed the same. Uh, now we get the downward spiral. Oof. Uh, so 26th is VP versus Pro. Ouch. <laughs> How the mighty have fallen. Yeah. Uh, versus Pro. This lineup was second at last major. Damn. That. Oof. That's, that's going to be hard to swallow for them. I'm assuming the last major, uh, what, because they're second, uh, first was Astralis, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. Cause it yep. <laughs> uh, so apparently Adren is IGLing now. That is an interesting choice. Uh, another one for, uh, who's come over from Gambit. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, he went to he went to Phase first, and then to yeah. What was Avangard now versus Pro? Yeah, it, and it didn't work very well over. I think he there wasn't a uh, internal issues having like between him and Nico specifically. They were having. Uh, especially? probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but VP came fourth in the CIS Rotario. However, okay. uh, Pro League Season 11, 13th to 15th, and Katowice, 13th to 16th. I guess not the... They haven't really showed up too much in their last few tournaments. At least no. not, in their, not in their best form. But they do have uh, Yekindar now, so... Be interested to see how he does. Hmm. Uh, so, Vert's Pro are down four places from last month. Sorry, uh, is that Heroic down four places? Vert's Pro. Vert's Pro, oh. Of course, yeah. Uh, now we get to 25th. Okay. Which is Forts. Yep. With uh, wow. sexy power. The fact, the fact that VP are behind Fours, oof. Fours has got... There's, there's not a terrible lineup to be fair to him. Yeah, but even so, you'd expect a, a team like VP to be at least in the top 50% of that listing. True. But to be fair, taking nothing away from Fox, they do have a, a decent ish lineup. And mm. a, a good opera in Exapower. Okay. Where did they come in Road to Rio? 9th to 10th. Okay, not bad. And they're down 7 places from last month. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big oof. Yeah. Uh, now we get some positives again though. So we've got in 24th place is North. Mm -hmm. Of course they've got Crystal in on loan at the moment. Uh, Kirby's out on medical leave. Yeah. Eighth in. Is that another, one of the, is that another uh, taking a break because of stress one, or is it an actual? Um, I can't remember. Who knows with Denmark? <laughs> you can never tell. 
Could be a weed overdose at this point. Could be. <laughs> uh, but they came eighth in Rotario. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one of the tournaments on here is DreamHack Sevilla 2019, where they won. Okay, I didn't even realize they'd won a DreamHack in the last year. Uh, well, God, the last time I remember North winning a DreamHack and act, like actually watching it was uh, right before the Face It Major. Oh yeah, uh, yep, yep. Where they beat Astralis twice, like 2-0 or something. Oh yeah, I think I remember watching this. Because uh, this, this was back in the days of Blastralis, when Astralis were kind of skipping lots of tournaments, but they yeah. went to that one DreamHack event. And they, uh, was it, for, was it second map nuke? If I'm not mistaken, it was second map nuke and, uh, Astralis were just all over the show. Yeah. Uh, like, I remember, uh, I remember that tournament a lot because I was on holiday in the Highlands of Scotland when it happened. <laughs> and, because it was still on the high of, like, Astralis are just so dominant and then North just come out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I think I actually remember at the time the cast was joking about this as the new um, North era. Yeah. <laughs> like, didn't last, <laughs> obviously, but it's funny at the time. Yeah, so they're up uh, one place from last month. Well, improvement is improvement. Yeah. Uh, in 23rd is Heretics. Okay. Which they've sort of, they've been on the rise, but like sort of quietly. Yeah. And they do have some of like the sort of the more experienced French players like Kiyoshima and XMS. Okay, okay. To be fair, they've got Kiyoshima on their team, anything can happen. Yeah, I think he's IGLing. Ooh. How old is Kyo? Ooh, um. 25. 25, oh, okay. That actually kind of makes sense, to be fair. Because he's, like, kind of gone past his prime-ish age in terms of reaction time and entry fracking and that sort of thing like he used to. Play, pulling a crazy 1v4 clutches that I remember when he used to be in Envy back in the day. Um, so the fact that he's come back to an IGL role... He's got all of that experience backing him up to play IGL, but at the same time, he's still a decent enough player. And at 25, he's young enough to be able to still hold his own. Yeah. So that could be that could be a strong roster if they work. Yeah, so they've got that experience. And then mixed in there is uh, a couple of youngsters like Lucky and Nivera, uh, Screams mm -hmm. brother. Okay. And people don't know him for his one-taps. No, they don't. <laughs> But they do know him for coming 6th in Rotorio. Oh. <laughs> and Heretics is up 7 places from last month. Okay, it has a big jump. Not as big as Movie Star Riders with 10 spots, but... Or Hard yeah. with 21. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is a big improvement. Yeah. Twenty uh, second is the first of the EU mixed teams in OG. Uh huh. With, Th those um, they're owned by Red Bull, uh, parent company, aren't they? Are they owned by Red Bull? Yeah. Or are they just sponsored? I don't know. One of I've the two. Their, I've seen that logo. Yeah, the logo does have Red Bull on it. Uh, so this is, I believe this is the only British player in the top 30 teams. Alright. We're, we're not the best at Counter-Strike. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Yeah, uh, they're all for Mantu. I think I've heard of him. Yeah, he was on, uh, Alternate Attacks before joining OG. Mm -hmm. Of course, they've got NBK and Alexi B, two really good IGLs. Uh, okay, so OG is partnered with Red Bull, 
and it's ah. not owned, but if I had to guess, I would. It would be a case of Red Bull having a majority shareholding, sort of thing. Or a, at least, if it's not majority, like forty-five percent. Yeah, yeah. Like it would be like a forty-five to thirty-five to thirty split, or, or to twenty split, or something like that. So it's like technically they'd hold the majority share, but it wouldn't be over fifty percent. Yeah. So. They can call all the shots without officially owning the company. <laughs> <laughs> Tax evasion at its finest. So, uh, what do you think about having two IGLs on a roster? I think that sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, NBK and Alexi B. Ooh. Okay. Uh... Alright, who, who was pulling names out of a hat when they were trying to build a roster? <laughs> to, to be fair um, from what I saw I haven't seen much of OG but from what I saw when NBK was still on Vitality and Alex was then the full IGL they weren't switching between the two Alexi B came from Ents yep, yep. Uh, from what I saw on Vitality NBK was doing really well as like a secondary opera yep and there were some rounds Vitality were basically putting him in B alone with the orb, and he was like locking it down. Yeah, yeah. M MBK is one hell of a of a rifler as well. Yeah. I mean, I do you do you remember like the highlight videos from twenty seventeen? Like maybe thirty percent of the clutch clips were MBK. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things I remember from OG because I haven't watched a lot, but. The main place where I've watched them was the Blast um, series earlier in the year when it was on LAN. Yeah. And Issa was getting like really uh, amped up when they were doing well. Yeah. Like he was literally standing up and looking over the screens. <laughs> <laughs> Stewie TK style. <laughs> Jump on the desk at the Boston Major. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so OG are down seven places this after the last month. Rip. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Alexi B and Ents, by the way, Ents are in twenty first. Oh. That, that must uh, that must hurt for Alexi B then to be leaving Ents and then ending up in a team that drops below them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, first of the uh, six man rosters. Of course, yeah. we've got Alu, Ariel, Sunny, Sergey, Yampi, and then X7. They picked up Yampi. They did pick up Yampi. They didn't put him in their academy team first. Do Ents have an academy team? I don't know, but like if they did, I would have thought that would be the play. No, he's uh he played in the um. Nordic uh, Blast Invitational event, the Elisa Invitational, mm -hmm. and he, I believe he played in Dreamhack, and mm -hmm. he's playing in the Blast European Showdown as well. Okay, yeah, Ents don't have an academy team. But if they did, like, you would have thought bringing in a player as young as Yampi, you'd want to trial him in like a lower tier bracket first to see if he because if he starts stomping in those low tier circuits well not you know it's not low tier but like relative to tier one teams then that would give you a, a virtue it'd be a bit of virtue signaling like um okay we should probably uh put him into our main roster and see how he does in one of the smaller tournaments but the fact that they're just kind of going all in on, on, a, on a gamble on such a young player, I, I, su I suppose that shows you how much uh, raw potential one person can have sometimes. Uh, well, he was on uh, SJ Gaming for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, where he averaged a 1.19 rating. Damn, that's actually pretty good. And that yeah. was that was like as you say, mostly against like sort of tier three, tier two teams. Yeah. 
and I'm just like quickly trying to scroll through. Uh, Ents is in there in one instance, and that's about it for the sort of tier one teams. Yeah. Uh, so he did he did do well on a roster before Ents. It'd be intriguing to see how he does on on a uh, team with some more established and uh, grounded talent. Yeah, there was, a, there was a clip from one of the first games in that Elisa Invitational event where yep. him and Ali won does two. They grabbed orbs, both went mid and just like picked apart the enemy team one by one. So they were just trading the orb cycle basically, like peeking off each other. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think... sounded like the dumbest strat. I think they literally like... did get a 3k and a 2k just picking the enemy team off one by one. Oh my god. And was it literally back and forth for each player, like, who got the kills? Was it like... I think so, yeah. Oh my god. (laughs) They must have practiced that. That can't have been a random, spontaneous decision. I mean, Alu's had Jelleg, so anything could be spontaneous or practiced. Yeah. God, Alu, IGL. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So they're in the same place as last month, in 21st. Right. Uh, 20th is big. That's not very big. <laughs> I'm Sorry. I'm curious <laughs> as to what language big are calling in. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, that's actually a, a good question. Because obviously it, when what, Zantara's... What, three, when, what, three Germans and then what are the other two? Uh, four Germans and Sorry, oh, four Germans. Zantara's who's Turkish. Oh... But obviously, when Zantara's came over to Big, Smuya was in the lineup. Yeah. Uh, so, so they, they would have been doing were, English. Yeah, they were doing English. But apparently, I remember an article saying Zantara's was really motivated and he was taking not mm. only English lessons, but German lessons as well. Yeah. And but Zantara's he's... already speaks really good English as well, anyway. Like, if you've seen. Have you seen his streams? He's already quite fluent. Uh, I haven't, actually. Um, yeah, he's he's a very. He's a, he's a very fluent English speaker, so if I had to guess, I'd say for now they're probably making calls in English. But if Zantaras is taking German lessons, then that obviously is evidence enough to say that eventually they will be sticking to German calls because then you've got four players speaking their native tongue and one player a second language, which is probably the optimal way of doing things. Yeah, he he does live in Germany. Yeah. So yeah, we, again, we, and, and I, I can attest of uh, the number of times I've visited Germany or other German-speaking countries. After a few days staying in them, speaking to German people, because I do speak German myself, and you, re- it really does kind of wire you to be a lot more fluent when you're actually there in the whole, when everybody's speaking German and everything's written in German, and it and it forces you to constantly be thinking about the the German meaning rather than your own foot native language and it becomes a lot more fluent a lot more quickly as opposed to trying to learn the language living in a country where everything is english yeah so, that's, or turkish so that's why i'm uh looking forward to my third year of university which is in south korea <laughs> hopefully I'll, I'll come back from that third year speaking fluent korean <laughs> Yeah, so instead of you looking at a sign wondering why there's a, a picture of two stickmen playing volleyball, um, you'll actually be able to read the two stickmen playing volleyball and it'll actually make sense like a word. <laughs> but I, I could already read Korean pretty well. Yeah. I mean, literally, my, my Korean reading is basically at the same level as my English reading now, where I can read it and normally I'll be fine, and then every now and then I'll try reading a word and I'll just mess up the sentence. Yeah. It's also weird as well, like when I'm reading in German, because obviously the word order's all fucked. So you'll uh, kind of read the whole sentence, and then you'll have to like re-read it again in your head, like backwards, like to to, because you'll you'll read the translation, and then you'll like have to rearrange it in your head after you read the sentence first. So you kind of had to do it twice, <laughs> once to get the translated words, and then to get the order. <laughs> Yeah. It's it's weird. Uh so the main sort of result in Big's ranking is the mm-hmm. season eleven of Pro League. 
Okay. Uh, while they came 16th to 18th. Ouch. <laughs> mm, yeah, that's no good. That's that's no good. Yeah. Was Antares on that roster by the time at the time when they were doing? Uh, before? yes. Zantaris oh, has been okay. on the roster for a while now. Oh. Hmm. Uh, so, big Adam full places from last month. Right. Uh, 19th place is Godsent. Okay. Where they no longer have, um, Michael Ely. Oh, that's why they've dropped off so much. <laughs> Well, I mean, Maizen has shown to shown himself to be a really good player as Godsend mm -hmm. sort of rose up. And they've got Sticko as well, who's like a really good support player. And yeah. He was on Mouse Bolts at one point. I, yeah, I do remember that. He uh, got replaced by Rops eventually. Uh, no, he was on the lineup at the same time as Rops. Oh, he was? Oh. Yeah. I thought it was a sharp replacement. No, um... Because the, the sort of the main lineup was like, I remember the main trio was like Chris J, Rops, Sticko. Mm -hmm. uh, Oscar was the opera. Yep, yep. Uh, I'm assuming Crystal's IGLing, for God's sake. Yeah, that's the that's the only one that would make sense realistically. He's got the most experience and he's been on the roster the longest, I think. Out of all of the other players. Uh, yeah, I think so. Then obviously Farleg is the newest addition. Mm -hmm. uh, they came 7th in Rotorio. Well, that's impressive. Uh, but they're down two places from last month. Ouch. Uh, 18th place, we get to uh, arguably the team that still hasn't recovered from dropping one of their players a long time ago, uh, mm. MIBR. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I honestly think that it's uh, only going to get worse before it gets better. I think the only way they could have properly improve the team was signing a Furia player and obviously they're all locked down on still like four years left on their contracts or something. Oh damn. <laughs> I remember it was like last year at some point or something along those lines where it was like this, people started talking about Furia and potentially about like MIBR starting to poach a player or two and then as Furia was doing really well the team signed five year contracts. Uh, they are. That's uh, kind of shooting yourself in the foot a little bit there, then. <laughs> yeah, especially as they've not exactly lived up to the success they had. Hmm. Uh, but they did come second in Flashpoint. Yeah, that's that's kind of like um. That's that's kind of like getting the uh, the reviewer model of the of the new MacBook that's like kitted out with better everything. And like thinking it's going to be the, the next big thing in terms of laptops. So you order a hundred of them to resell. And then you can't fucking sell any of them because it turns out they're actually shit. And you just got the, the reviewer model in the first place. Pretty much. That's basically what just happened with Furia. Yeah. Uh, they came 7th to 8th in Road to Rio. 4th mm -hmm. uh, in Pro League. That's, that's actually a good... Yeah, that's a good result. Yeah, so they, they, they have to be improving again, but yeah, they still need to find sort of what they had before. Mhm. Mm is Fallen still on that roster, or did he leave? I can't. I can't uh, yes, remember. Fallen is still on the roster. Okay. Uh, the roster, being Fallen, KNG, for Taco, and then they replaced Mayan with TRK. Okay. I think, I think, yeah, I think it was TRK I said last week was on like a team for like four years or something. 
Mm -hmm. Which is a long time to be on a team, as Fury are finding out. <laughs> well, I mean, Fallen's always been a bloodhound when it comes to sniffing out young talent, so who knows? Maybe, maybe he's got an ace up his sleeve. Maybe. But unlike some of the other Brazilian teams, MIBL doesn't have an academy team. Ah. Which Fury does, I think. <laughs> Irony. Uh, MIBI are down four places from last month. Okay. 17th is Complexity. Which is, uh, what do you class this team as now? EU, NA? I still class it EU, to be honest. Because they were, they were like, full NA before. Yeah. But then they brought in like Blame F, a Config, and now Poison. Yeah, the fact that the majority of the players are EU based, that's that's why I would say it's an EU team. Even though the organization itself is NA based. I think what determines whether it's an EU or an NA team is the players, not the organization itself. So Yeah. I mean if they brought in Yugi instead of Poison. Mm, but you Vulpers. got coached by Astralis, so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that would have been a primarily Danish team. Yeah. Another Danish one. As if the Danes <laughs> didn't have enough. <laughs> Give the rest of the world some, damn it. <laughs> yeah. But they, they do have a, a major winner on this roster in Rush. Maybe that's what I need to do. If I want my future grandkids to, like, win CSGO majors or, like, whatever comes out in the future, Counter-Strike-wise, I just need to marry a, a Danish girl. <laughs> Some of that. <laughs> just get uh, those good Danish genes. Yeah, uh, alternatively for something like Overwatch or League of Legends, uh, go to... Korean. Korea. Yep. <laughs> that is not totally not why you're going to Korea. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to make a prodigy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, but, again, they have... So they got Rush, who's a major winner. They've got a really good youngster in Oboe as well. Hmm. Uh, and that's it for the NA players in that roster. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> uh, they came 13th to 14th in Road to Rio. Right. And 10th to 12th in Pro League. And in, okay, both, of, in both of those, they played uh, in Europe. Hmm. Okay, well, so, consistent, at least. So it shows that whatever they're doing, it's solid. They just had to improve upon it. Yeah, I think they definitely look better on LAN, because uh, in the Blast series that was on LAN, they came 4th to 6th, and in DreamHack Open Anaheim, they came 3rd to 4th. Hmm. First world problems. <laughs> First world problems. Not used to twenty not used to twenty milliseconds of ping. <laughs> yeah. But they they've done well because they're up nine places from last month. So no, they're they're starting to get used to online. Yeah, yeah. I mean everybody's gonna be adapting to that gradually. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's definitely. I, I wonder if there's even going to be some cases of a. Uh, let's say there's like um, I, I'm not. I'm not saying suggesting like a player might just uh, turn on like a VPN to like up his ping ridiculously in an online match and then start using that to get peekers advantage. Like, is it, but uh, uh, like I'm imagining a case of like where somebody's having internet issues and their ping skyrockets all of a sudden and they notice and they're like, you know, what, I'm just gonna run out a ramp and mirage get two headshots because they can't see me before my I'm, I'm even there you know <laughs> like, yeah I delay. I do know with stuff like that it is um it's banned in online play where you're not allowed to run out spamming the pause button right because as you spam it the uh fps glitches and you actually glitch out as you're running across yeah I think yeah I have seen that uh so that's actually banned you're not allowed to do that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's fair enough, but like if there is like a, if there's a, like a an uncontrollable situation where your ping does start skyrocketing for some un, you know uh, reason that's out of your con 
control, like your ISP is just having heavy traffic or whatever at the time. You know, it's not like you can punish your player by taking advantage of that. It's just an environmental factor, you know. Yeah. There's uh, there's some pros that have like two internet connections. All oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I can't remember when it was. It was like a year or two ago. There was an online game. It was like a, qu- a close qualifier or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of the players had internet connection, so they took a technical pause, and then people were expecting it to be a long pause, and then, it, but it wasn't. Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay, he's just changed his internet connection. He swapped to the other one. <laughs> like, All right then, as you do. So it's like the equivalent of having like Sky and Virgin Media, basically. It's just like... Yeah, just paying like a hundred pound a month for internet or something. Jesus. <laughs> That's like a real first. That, that's not even a first world problem. That's a zero world problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, going... I've got to move my Ethernet cable from the left port to the right port. Going going to sixteenth place with a team that I'm actually a little bit surprised that this sort of high up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's Cloud Nine. Oh. Okay. With, with uh, NA South African mix. Okay, so they are still clutching to the to the uh, the remnants of the Boston Major. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still trying to hang in there. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, they came third at Road to Rio, fourth at Flashpoint. All right. So, uh, which result was it that dragged them all the way down to? Was it sixteenth? You said. Uh yeah. Well, I suppose just generally not having been great recently. Right. Uh, but they came 13th to 16th at Katowice. Ah. Uh, okay, that will probably be why then. But they went... I think they made it to playoffs in DreamHack because they went 2-1 and one in their group. I imagine your rank gets more heavily affected if you um get knocked out earlier on by like a, a team you're expected to beat as well. Uh, it probably does, yeah. Yeah carries more weight they beat EG in DreamHack by the way that's that's uh, ironic <laughs> <laughs> Tarek getting beaten by the new Cloud9 yeah uh, oh, but they're, they're up four places from last month alright okay trying to make a name for themselves yeah now we get to the top 15 Mm-hmm. The big boys. Top fifty percent. Yeah, we start with Mad Lions. Right. Who used to be tricked, right? Uh yep. Yeah. Yep. Unfortunately, uh there's no Hunden. Ooh. Cause he retired. Ah. <laughs> no no retired in inverted commas. He's uh Getting ready for Valorant. <laughs> that's, that's what I changed. No, uh, he's uh, he's coaching heroic now. Oh, okay. Huh. I think it was I think it was Asilian that uh, replaced him on the roster. Hmm. And I I like how I like all the flack he got for replacing his uh, Hunden just purely because of it being Hunden. <laughs> <laughs> So nothing um, to do with his past or anything, just he replaced Hunden, we don't like him. <laughs> it's like even if he helps him win a major, no, we still want Hunden back. Yeah. Uh, they won Flashpoint, by the way. Oh, okay. Uh, they came and, and, uh, the fans still don't like him? Uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Third to fourth at Ice Challenge, which I remember Navi was at that. Yeah. Uh, but ninth to twelfth at Katowice. Okay. Not bad. All I can see in this flashpoint is they two had fun plus Phoenix, and I'm trying to work out if that was against what is heroic, and was meant to go to fun plus Phoenix, but then obviously. Yeah. Esetag got signed by Astralis. <laughs> hmm. Uh, or if it's the NA roster that randomly just agreed to play under the name. Yeah, it's a uh, bit of a mess, that one. 
<laughs> yeah. I don't think you're really gonna get a, a clear, concise answer to that without asking um, one of the org owners in person. Yeah, Fun Plus Phoenix Adventure in CS, almost by, as bad as Hundred Thieves initial one. No. <laughs> Yeah, I remember, I remember 100 Thieves put up, like, a massive, like, video, like, hyping up their entry into CSGO. Like, they had, like, this massive warehouse, like, offices and everything, like, big gaming setups and stuff. They were really, like, hyping up the investment they were putting into the C their CSGO team. And then it just flopped. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least they got stickers. Yeah. True. They may not have played in the major, but they got the stickers for the major. <laughs> it was literally like the uh, the equivalent of you tried. Here's a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so mud lines are down three places from last month. Hmm. Uh, now we get to fourteenth, which is the team I really want to see their facilities because of the game I watched the other day. Right. Uh, so it's Genji, which is they're sort of a South Korean American organization. Okay. Uh, one of their founders is uh, Korean American. Yep. But two of their players, uh, I think it was Kusta and Bentet, were playing in the actual Genji facilities for the game. Okay. So. The rooms they were sat in, but it was like these big sort of like gaming rooms where it was like there was like ten computers in the room, five on each side. Yeah. And I was like, like have a full lab. Yeah, so I was like, oh, okay, so Ben Tep, Kusta sat in the same room, but social distancing. Mm hmm They were in different rooms. There was two of them. Oh my god. <laughs> There's at least twenty <laughs> high end gaming computers in Gen G's facilities. I want to take a tour of this place. Oh my god, dude! I mean, it's like that. That's like that um, one hotel that's in. Um, uh, I think it's in Tokyo, like at the gaming hotel. Like we're in the lobby. There's just like a, a land setup of twelve high-end computers with ten seven TTIs in them. Yeah. So, and then each room um, has like two gaming PCs in it as well. Like because they're all like double, like either double rooms or like. Um, twin rooms. It's it's just stupid, you know. Like, yeah. How how much money is that hotel spending on the electricity bill, and then also to like get those PCs in there in the first place, and then how much are they charging per night? I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the game I was watching was Genji versus uh, MIBR in the mm. uh, Blast Showdown. All right. This is this is the uh, the CT scoreline for some. Okay. One and fourteen. Oof. This is the um. Oh no! Sorry, that's the T scoreline for some. Okay. The CT scoreline. Eighteen and seven. Okay. I guess he's a CT player. <laughs> <laughs> the the T half was the first half for Genji. Yeah. And they lost it 12-3. Uh, mm. One thing I don't like is in the black in this showdown they didn't have overtimes. It was just fifteen fifteen ties. Okay. That's uh, a big game. Yeah. This game did actually tie fifteen fifteen. Mm. Uh, it helped out by the fact that Som got like four kills or something in the final round. Like, he just went insane with the AWP. He was just sat on, like, the back of bombsite on train. Yeah. And, and just got... Wait, uh, bombsite A or B? Uh, a. Okay. Like, he got a kill. Ivy, Pop Dog, one close right. up. He just went insane for the final round. Oh, no. <laughs> there was literally nothing I could do. And Taco, uh, during that second half, went 2-13. and 13. He just had to read. He, he was, uh... Taco was tasked with like pop dog most of the time. Mm -hmm. Ben Tet was just having none of it. <laughs> Have you seen that new um, trick that some players are doing now where on pistol rounds they'll buy a deagle not because it's a deagle but because of the clip? 
and what they're uh, specifically for the map train. So on a pistol round to each side, you buy you have one player buys a deagle, and what he does is like right at the start um, of the match, you got to fire one bullet so that you can reload. Um, but you don't, so you so you obviously fire off the shot into your spawn. So you're far enough away from the CCs they can't hear you right at the start of the match. So you fired that bullet, and then you get above Pop Dog, and you uh, after obviously jump peeking it to make sure nobody's directly below. And then you hit the reload, and then the magazine obviously drops out down the ladder, and it looks like a flashbang. <laughs> so like, that's what some teams are doing now. They'll have a T side pistol round on train. They'll buy a deagle just for that. Well, I mean, if it works, it works. Mm. But uh, the play that snow inactive that was a part of the team. Uh, I'm in slash we own. Uh, he yeah. he liked to buy a deagle on pistol round for T side, regardless of the map. <laughs> I, uh, I mean the extra the extra damage uh, at range, you know. Yeah, uh, our our main sort of pistol strat for Mirage was uh, contact B, with him going mid with a deagle. Can we also just quickly talk about how fucking stupid it is that if you hit a player in the chest with a deagle, uh, like a you know medium to long range, it's like forty to forty-five damage. But if you hit them in the stomach, it does fifty-five. Uh yeah. That's... So you can two-shot somebody with a deagle if you hit them in the stomach. But if you hit them in the chest, where their vitals are. <laughs> yeah. The Deagle is possibly the most broken gun in the game. Yeah, well, no, it's not just that. It's just like the the hitbox as well is just stupid. And then there was then there was that update that lasted for like a week or something where it was yeah, basically a scout without a scope. Yeah, yeah. It's a seven hundred dollar scout. I did get a couple of like cold zeros with it on Mirage and Casual when I was messing about with it. <laughs> Uh, so, 13th is Spirit. Genji's mm -hmm. up 9 places, by the way. Oh, wow. Uh, Spirit in 13th place. Uh, Mia is IGLing again. But is he's not, like, Gambit form. Right. He's doing really well with this lineup. And then, uh, their youngest player is 16, by the way. Oh. <laughs> uh, God. He's, yeah, he's called Magix. Not to be confused with Magisk. Right, so it's like the, the S comes after the K instead of the other way around. <laughs> is, that, is that how it is? Uh, it's double X. Oh. Yeah, just, just to, you know, confuse you even yeah. more. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't have the three X's at his age, I suppose. He's got to wait until he's 18 for that. That is true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, they won Rotorio. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, did they? I don't think they faced Na'Vi at all. Hmm. No, they didn't. <laughs> that would have been interesting. They two old Gambit youngsters, two old Forts, two old Unique... 2-1 against Namiga, 2 old win strike, 2-1 against VP, and then 2 old win strike again. Oh. So they didn't really lose a single... They lost two maps out of the entire road to Rio. Oh my god. <laughs> I um, mean, it's not, it's not quite Na'Vi getting all the way to the semi-finals in Katowice without dropping a single map, but... <laughs> it's still it's pretty still good. Impressive. Yeah, it's still pretty good. Especially after that's a bounce back from going 13th to 15th in Pro League. Yeah. Uh, so Spirit's up six places. Uh, on to my favourite team, NIP. Right. In 12th place. Man. Nock and Plopski are so good. Yeah, just... Plopski is really underrated. I'm just going to throw that out there. Nork and Plopski are so good. Mm -hmm. I agree. Plopski, um, in all honesty, I, I would say he's worthy of being on a roster like Astralis. 
Uh, well, hopefully this team can sort of get to the reaches of, like, top one again. Mm-hmm. But there was... Was it the game against Ents? Yeah, so... The game where Nip tiroed Ents in DreamHack... Yeah. Nock had a 1.51 rating. Oh. <laughs> and Plotsky had a 1.42 rating. That That's, uh... Dominates right there. How do you play against that? You, you, uh, here's what you do. You hit the escape key, and then on the left-hand side, there's the little tick mark, and you click that, and then vote forfeit. <laughs> Plopsky's rating in the past three months has been 1.15. <laughs> He's, uh, of course, he's 18 now as well, Plopsky, so he can have the uh, Betway sponsorship on his jersey once we get to land. Nice. Uh, he's been stuck as the odd one out, not having Betway on his shirt. Oh, that's, that's the other thing. It's like, not allowed to have Betway sponsorship on your jersey yet because you're under 18, but you're allowed to have Monster on there, even though they recently added the age restriction on how old you have to be to buy Monster. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, come on, you... you, you... You can't censor one and not the other. <laughs> yeah. I think it's interesting that with eSports they've done that. Where Plopsky's not allowed to wear the Betway branding. Mm -hmm. But if that was done in, say, football... Yeah. That would be, like, one of the first things spoken about. Hmm. Uh, so, looking at their recent results, I was hoping I'd be on it by now. <laughs> looking at their recent I results, think, uh, I think I've mostly sobered up at this point. I think I'm nice. almost first. Uh, fifth in Road to Rio, and uh, seventh to ninth in Pro League. Okay. But that was with uh, Lecro I gelling. Ah, okay. That's. Hmm. Wait, so they, they, they perform better with a player IGLing who doesn't normally IGL, is that what you're telling me? Uh, well, I think it took a little bit of time for Hampus to get in, because they got slapped by Vitality. Right. Uh, in the first map, they got slapped by Na'Vi, and they were getting slapped again on Nuke by Na'Vi. Right. But then Na'Vi was winning like 14 to 6 or something, and Nip just suddenly woke up. Hmm. Uh, no, that no, that's that's called the Navi choke. Same um, thing happened. Well, you uh, say that, but then they swiftly toed ends. They then beat Astralis sixteen seven. The, the same thing happened in the, in last year's major. Like Navi got to um, I think it was like fifteen to ten on Dust two versus uh, who was it versus? I don't even remember now. But Simple went for a knife kill. And then I, whoever it was who was last left alive, he simply went for the knife kill and ended up winning a 1v4 and then they pulled it back to overtime and then the, and then Navi ended up losing the entire... I think that was Nitro. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're right, it was Team Liquid. Because wasn't, wasn't it Nitro had like seven kills or something at the time? Yeah. And then Simple went to knife him, whiffed. And not, it, it's like I said, it's the Navi choke. They all get like close to winning and then they get cocky. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think there, there's definitely more structure in Navi now, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So that's, after that's mainly because of Boomage. After getting slapped by Vitality and Navi, Hampus started to settle in. They two old ends. They beat Astralis sixteen seven. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Good and result. Hampus actually went positive in that game. Went nineteen eleven. Nice. So he he settled in now. Sold into T1 CS. Hmm. But is he IGLing as Lecro or as himself now? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good question. Because we did we did touch upon uh, last week about how in that game against Vitality it was said he was calling like Lecro calls on Vertigo. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder if he's. Um, I, w I wonder if the whole thing, like where they were getting slapped around, he was still trying to play to the team's needs and try and match what Letcro would do. But now he's actually 
kind of just he's like fuck it let me do my own thing now they're actually playing better because it's more organic and he's not trying to fake somebody else's role yeah uh we've done it we've taken we've taken a while with this <laughs> we've taken a long time just reviewing the top 30 yeah <laughs> uh so dip up plus one I want to get this kind of in-depth analysis anywhere else, though. Yeah, that is true. Eleventh place is a hundred thieves who are down one place. Oh. Uh, the the Australian roster. Mhm. Mm Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Which uh, rose sort of rose to prominence with Nifty in it, and then kept at those heights when the Nifty left to go to Envy. Yep. But now they've got Harry Potter and Leo's, so... You know, magic is on their side. Yeah, if they if they um end up coming up against Na'vi and uh, they need to deal with Simple, they can just cast an Expelliarmus and he's lost his orb. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. Easy win. Yeah. Uh, sixth in Road to Rio, fifth in Pro League, and then fifth to sixth in Katowice. Nice. Yeah, okay. So, 100 Thieves are actually starting to pick up the pace, it, look, it looks like. They're actually trying to make true on their promise to get a foot into the CSGO scene. Which is good to see. I'm glad, I'm glad more, more organizations are. Yeah, well, I mean, they chose a good team to buy out Renegades in terms of a roster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Uh, as is IGL. They're already doing well. Yeah, as is IGLing. Uh, he was the one that took up that role after Nifty left. Mm. Uh, I, 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 every time I hear 100 Thieves or Nifty or Renegades, my mind just goes back to Nifty B hopping through A apps yeah. in Inferno and getting that <laughs> quick scope. I think that's that's probably an iconic thing in Australian CS. Yeah, definitely. It's like, I wonder if, like, the week after that frag happens, like, all of Australian CS was people trying to B-hop down. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do, try to do it on occasion as well. Yeah. I've, I've hit it a couple times, but the two times I have hit it, nobody was there. Nice. No, t tell a lie. The second time I hit it, they came in through bedroom instead and I got backstabbed. <laughs> I was like, fucking bitch. <laughs> uh, moving on to the top ten. It's Vitality. Alright. Uh, with Masuta. Zaihu. <laughs> Zaihu. Yeah. Um, by the way, I believe... Uh, you know Velas? Mm hmm She casted Masuta at, like, a, a small local sort of LAN before yeah, he she... became uh, a part of Vitality. And before yeah, she was big. doing a bit of the the Dutch casting, if I wasn't, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, she actually she was uh, casting the Dutch uh, broadcast for Blast. Yeah. Recently. Which is a huge uh, opportunity to pick up. That's congratulations to her. Yeah, she's uh, she's rising up in the casting world. Caught the eyes yeah. of people like Frankie. Yeah. <laughs> Now she's actually just got to get global um, to be a respected caster. You can't you can't be a caster and not have global. It's not allowed, <laughs> according to the fans. What rank was she? I think she was like MG two or something. No, she she only just got. Uh, no, yeah, you're right. She got out of Nova and then got into MG two because like she uploaded a video a few weeks ago. Like she finally got out of Nova. <laughs> Which it's like okay, yeah, congrats. I guess like when you see her play, it's it's almost like. Stop playing the game and go and do some aimbots for a few hours, and actually feel the weapons out. Because like you're you're not comfortable with how the weapons are in themselves, you know. Like you can see the way she's like cross her placement into the ground and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I like playing it with her from a sort of like personality and info point of view. Oh yeah, especially like when um like Zaiwu first became noticed on the scene in that show match and Frankie was interviewing him and she was like anything to say Zoe and he was just like no <laughs> 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 yeah 
<laughs> I don't um, know if that's just because he was shy or because he didn't speak much English. I don't know. I mean, he's in FPL, so you'd think he speaks some English. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of Apex IGLing? Interesting choice. Yeah, I, I can see it working. I can also see it not working, but I'm more I'm like 60-40 on this. I think 60% it'll pay off, 40% it will probably go down the shitter. Yeah, I suppose um, if they need to, they can backfall on shocks. Mm -hmm. uh, but they came fourth in Rotorio. Is this another six-man roster as well? Uh, no. No. Well, technically no. I think Alex is still under contract, but he's doing whatever he's doing. Right, he's gone off for his gap year, he's uh, exploring South America, he'll come back and see his parents when he's well and ready. Yeah, uh, right. making sure not to get with the wrong type of uh, escort, Yeah, the ones that have had a little extra surprise. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> Although you find those more commonly over where you're going, not not in South America. No, that's Thailand. <laughs> that's Thailand, not South Korea. Yeah. South Korea is even even more backwards than a, a lot of other places in the West when it comes to LGBT. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I'm aware of that. <laughs> uh, so another down by one team in ninth place is EG. Okay. So these three, in relative to each other, stayed in the same place, and then Fury went up three places into eighth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So EG eighth place. Mhm. Mm uh, after they um, was it Daps they snaked out to bring in mm. Sun as well. I I believe so. Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. they snaked out. I'm a pet as well. Sun as well and Tarek. Yeah, and now Tarek's IGLing for them again, same as he was on Cloud9. Uh, no, it's Stan as well. Oh, Stan as well is IGLing. Oh. Yeah. But he is, he is a good IGL, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, they came second I in Pro mean, League. Maybe the reason they, they bought Stanislaw in was as a temporary fixture for Tarek to learn more from, and they'll replace Stanislaw later on. Uh, no, I think Stan and Tarek are good friends. Right. Which is why when there was the whole internal issue with I'm a pet leaving, it was those two together because they're friends. And yeah. both of them didn't like I'm a pet. Yeah. But they came second in Road to Rio uh second in Pro League and seventh to eighth in Road to Rio. Okay. It's not terrible. Doing better than they first were when Tarek first moved over to them, so Yeah. Um, as I said, Fury is in 8th place. Okay. With, uh, I just, I just remember, one of the original roster that signed the 5 year contract is, isn't in the team anymore. How? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they have Henny instead. Hmm. Do you remember that point in time when, like, uh, Lucas and Henny weren't leaving each other? And they were always in the same team. Oh, um, I don't, I don't really recall it to be honest. They were, they were on Luminosity together for a while. Right. I think literally, apart from when one of them went to MIBR and Henny and Furia, they've literally been on the same team. They were on Temple Storm together, Immortals, Luminosity. Yeah. I mean, they are brothers, so can't really blame them. Yeah, okay. Uh, when they were on Luminosity, is that when Fallen was also on that roster at the same time? Uh, no, because that was... That roster was what then became SK, and then Luminosity picked up the roster that had Lucas and Henny. Okay, alright. Uh, staying in the same place as last month is FaZe. Okay. With two youngsters from the Baltics. Hmm. And a Brazilian. 
There's literally no just sort of standard CS nation anymore, really. No, yeah. I mean, other than Charlotte, Denmark. <laughs> no, no, like, I mean, in the phase roster, for an EU team, there's not really any standard nations anymore. Yeah, yeah. Like, Bosnia, Norway, Brazil, Latvia, and Lithuania. Yeah. Like how G2 was supposed to be a French team, and they've got... Like a player from Austria as well, isn't it? Uh, it's Bosnia. Uh, it's it's. Oh, Bo oh, Bosnia. Yeah, it's Nico's cousin. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> uh, but then they're meant to be an international roster now. Yeah. Which they didn't really go that international because I think Hunter and Nico are also Serbian. Mhm. Mm which next is Serbian, so it's just two nations in there, not really but an international yeah. roster. Uh, third in Rotorio, fifth in Pro League, mm -hmm. seventh to eighth in Katowice. But they've not done bad at FaZe, to be fair. Yeah, FaZe just kind of doing FaZe things. They've uh, they got a 200 on the form ranking, which is the max you can get. Hmm. So they have been playing consistently, then they're just getting either unlucky or steamrolled by bigger teams. Yeah. Um, sixth place is Liquid. Okay. Down by one. Rip. <laughs> As I, I... Also, that's that's a point actually. Um, because obviously Stewie Two K moved to MIBR at first, but he's no longer on that roster, is he? That's true. So where where's Stewie Two K gone to? Liquid. He's gone back to Liquid. No, he uh oh, he oh, yeah. left from. He went to MIBR oh, yeah, from C9. Yeah, right. He left from Cloud9, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, that makes sense. Sorry, no, for some reason I thought it was Liquid to MIBR and then Liquid again. Yeah, oh. um... Liquid hasn't done that well recently. Right. They, I mean, they came fourth in Rotorio and they won the NA Pro League. Mm -hmm. But they... The Game is Without Borders thing... Mm -hmm. uh, it, for the NA region, it was just them and 100 Thieves. Yep. And 100 Thieves 2 owed them. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, uh, you shouldn't be getting... Team Liquid shouldn't be getting 2 owed by a team like 100 Thieves. They they also lost to Chaos in Dreamhack. Hmm. And to Furia. I wonder if that's um, similar to RV, just like online getting to them whereas they used to land. It could be, it could be. Uh... I just like how for the Gamers Without Borders thing, they played Tuscan hmm. from like 1.6 or something. Alright. So, like some of the players didn't even know of the map, needed to die. <laughs> but I it's like, a yeah, they, there, was, there was some parts of that game that were literally just pushing forwards from the bomb site as CTs and then just getting like two or three kills. <laughs> Because they obviously nobody knows the map, so they wouldn't know what the kind of contact points were, and it just came down to who could react quicker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so in fifth place, and the team that almost got the max achievement rating, right? They were one point off. Uh, Mousebots. Oh, that's that's interesting. That's a that's a wild card. Uh, they're down a, one place since mm -hmm. last month. Uh, I don't know how I feel about this roster. Because I, I like Carrigan as an IGL. Yeah. And he probably likes the fact that he's ahead of FaZe. Definitely, yeah. Uh, but they've I got... Mean, personally, personally, I'm a fan. Like, you've got a mind like Carrigan's backing up um, superstars like Chris J and Rob's. Yeah, it's only gonna lead to something entertaining to watch. <laughs> uh, apart from Chris Drake, the rest of the roster is like fairly young, so they're gonna listen to you as well. They're not gonna have a massive ego. No. Uh, but they came thirteenth to fourteenth in Rotorio. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's uh, a bit of a lackluster performance. Yeah. Considering uh, the placement ranks. And second in Pro League. Yeah. So basically, online 
uh, they're probably the most inconsistent team at the moment. <laughs> Especially as they didn't do well in their group in DreamHack either. In fact, I think they didn't win a single game. So it's basically the team uh, embodiment of Alu. Yes. <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate. Uh, G2 is in 4th place. They're up 2 places. Not bad. With, of course, the man that we faced against in a random MM game. Yep, that Lem match. My rank up match. I, I just remember, like, because we started on the T side, I just remember the pistol round where we rushed mid and Amanek was there and he just tapped out all five of us. Every single one, yeah. And it, and in the second round we did the same thing with Glocks and he had a shotgun. Yeah. And I, I just remember everybody getting like one shot by the shotgun and I somehow managed to two tap him in the head and win a duel with a Glock 18 versus an XM. And I was like... <laughs> I'm going pro! <laughs> I, I just remember, like, wait, is this the real person? Is this actually Amanek? Yeah. And just looking through his friends, list, seeing, like, the LDLC coach, I'm like, wait, It was is the it? skins matching up that sold it for me. Like, the fact that the skins were all the same, and the names of the weapons as well. Yeah, the, the but I was, I was just, like, scamming through the friends list, and then we had the piss round. I was like, it's Amanek! It's Amanek! <laughs> I still can't believe we tied that match. That, yeah, but... Didn't we have to come back to tie that as well? Yeah, it was um, 11 rounds in a row we ended up having to win. God, that is... Yeah. It's, it's pretty good against Amalek. Yeah, we were down 15 to 4. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to the top three. Hmm. Um... Are you aware of the big names we have left? Uh, Na'Vi, Astralis, and... Other big name. I don't know. I I'm not sure what the third one is. It's amusing how you've listed that, actually. Uh, because the right. team that you couldn't name is the third place team. Mm -hmm. Which is Fnatic. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I didn't expect them to be that high up the rankings, to be honest. Uh, well, to fair, they've done really well, to be fair, to them. Mm -hmm. uh, Are we going to get another Fnatic era where they're just winning so many tournaments everybody thinks they're evil again? <laughs> well, they've won, they won Pro League. Uh, I don't think they did that well in Rotorio, though. Uh, 12th, yeah. Didn't, didn't they get beat by someone? I swear they got beat by, like, a godsend or someone. Okay, new it, was, it, was, it was Movie Star Riders, that was it. Do you, do you remember when uh, the CZ got ridiculously buffed and then like people were saying it's Fnatic Z because they yeah. kept all like, playing CZ? <laughs> yeah, same with the uh, Tech 9 and Olofmeister. Yeah. It's always Fnatic with the pistols. Yeah, Fnatic 9. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and keeping with the way you listed the top three, by the way, Mm -hmm. Astralis is second. Oh. Wow. Obviously, their, their internal turmoil with Glaive and Zip leaving has upset that balance somewhat. Yeah. Um, and so it's Navi first, where they've maxed out two of the three uh, points for a ranking. I'm telling you. It's simple year. He's winning a major. It could be. And if there was two majors, I'd be inclined to agree with you. Mm -hmm. But there's only one major this year. All the more reason why Simple's got to win it. <laughs> true, true. But I, I think Astralis, with their um, not needing to save strats for a major, uh, when there's like, like not needing to save strats for the second major... I think they'll win it again. Mm hmm I mean, yeah, there's that, but then... Which team was it that came out with the crazy Freeman boost on Overpass to get entry kills into the A-bomb site? Uh, I can't remember. Back in, back in 2017. 
No, no, that was that was Navi as well. On the, on the fly, they just created some three man stack towers. And and they did two of them in one half. They did one at birthday to get a pick on long, and then they did one in long to get a pick on dumpster. <laughs> a, about three rounds apart between the two boosts. I don't know. I I want to I want to say simple will do it, but the the reason is because one of the bits of news we've got is Astralis skipping the second uh, Arama event, right? Because uh, of the whole thing with like Glaive and Zipex. Mm -hmm. But they probably they probably don't need to call that event anyway. They're probably qualified. I think there was something like seven hundred and fifty points ahead of second place. Oh damn! So they don't need to go to the event anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, but I I think with a well rested glaive, they're just gonna dominate the major. I mean, potentially. Nah, there's there's you. Well, there's so many different factors that can happen. It it could go glaive gets well rested and he comes back and he's in better form than ever and destroys him back to dominating again, or it could be glaive goes away. He gets rusty, comes back, and Astralis are even worse off than um, it, they were when they were using Yugi and Snappy to replace them, um, and they've gotten used to that lineup. That is a possibility, so, you know, but I just don't see Glaive doing that. Yeah. But I've just seen in like the results on the right hand side of HLTV. Mm -hmm. Uh. N point two one against North. Oof. A UK team <laughs> beat North. Jeez. Uh, so moving on to some actual news. After spending a long time in depth analysis with the top yeah. thirty. Staying on topic with Astralis. Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, oh man, uh, device. Taking a little bit of taking some some shots from foreign, yeah. um, because obviously this new uh kind of shift this this player shift they've had to make to to replace Glaive and Zip, and they're not obviously performing as well as they usually do, and they're getting a lot of flack for it. So Device puts out a tweet saying, guys. Of course, we're not going to be performing as well as we usually do. Please lower your expectations accordingly. We're trying to get better. Which is, like, fair enough. He's just... He's fed up of seeing all of these hate comments. He's just saying, guys, just be sensible about it. Like, this isn't the normal Astralis. We're going to have to adapt. Yeah. You know? And then Thorin is, like, saying he's, a, he's being a narcissist for not being able to take criticism... Um, and only wanting praise even when they're performing badly, which isn't true at all. So it's like I don't know if Orange yeah. just on his period I... taking it out on device. <laughs> I d I don't know how um controversial this opinion is, but I really do not like Thorin. I don't like him either. I, I... Think he's a bit of an arsehole. I hate Thorin. <laughs> yeah. He's like... like he's like the Piers Morgan of CS:GO. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah. It's true, he is actually kind of a little bit. Yeah. But it's like... He he, go, he goes on as, like, the historian of esports. Yeah. And then he, like, when when he's on the analyst desk, or when he's, like, really making a video on YouTube or something, he, tr he tries to say something that'll be controversial, but thinks it'll be good to say. And he just sounds like a prick. Yeah, he's like stirring the pot and trying to be edgy just to get attention. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Is the, the only thing I really like about Foreign is how he hyped up Simple. <laughs> that's that's it. <laughs> but I mean, Device's comments are justified. It, you yeah. you do have to expect less from Astralis when they're playing with two, well, not, one stand-in and one new player. Not not just that, but his responses to foreign i also feel are justified he, you know he can't just take a, a a tweet like that and ignore it you know someone calling him out for being narcissistic 
you know, you've got to, like, at least reply to that and say, like, what are you saying? Yeah. But that's not what this is about. <laughs> and then the fact that Thorin takes it personally and starts throwing insults, it's like, you're completely justified to throw some insults back, you know, it's... Yeah. Like, I, 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 I get that people say it looks bad on the device for making it personal, but realistically, it's Thorin making it personal and the device is just replying in turn, so... Yeah, it's, that's true. Uh, it's it's on foreign for that. Um, I, d I do agree. Like, uh, if if device really wanted to get the upper hand PR wise, if he wanted to play it smart, he could have just said to foreign like, "Come on, mate, calm down. There's no need for this kind of language. This is just a discussion about the state of Astralis as a team. You know, this is supposed to be a, a um, constructive criticism. Yeah. You know." I so, wonder I, I wonder how much practice they've done with S attack. Mm. Because yeah. so, Snappy's sort of come in as a stand in, but I wonder if they were doing some practice with S attack as IGL. Well those first couple of matches that they played after Glaive and Zip left that they lost pretty severely, they said that was less than a week of practice with S tag. Uh, do you mean with Snappy? No, it was with S Tag. Because uh, Snappy's in. S Tag's still technically under contract with Heroic at the moment. No, I'm sure they've played S Tag. Not yet, they haven't. They haven't. They've played uh, Yugi and Snappy. Alright. So, how, how much longer is S Tag's contract for? Beginning of July, I believe. Yeah. You haven't got long to wait then. Not long now, yeah. Gives him plenty of time to practice I'm using him as an IGL if Glade doesn't come back in tough the major and he ends up extending his break. Yeah. Um, Alright, so we've had we've had politics, we've had uh, drama. Let's have a classic roster change, shall we? Okay. Uh, Logan and Gringo have been dropped by LDLC. Oh dear. Man, LDLC, what a drop they had. <laughs> I didn't even know who Gringo was before LDLC. <laughs> yeah. It brings a whole new meaning to drop AVP, except this time it's drop two players. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they have brought in uh, Afru, who I don't know much about. Never heard of. I've heard of him before, but I don't know much about him. But mm. the other player they brought in was Body. Oh. Good old Cash Wolbang. Yeah, so he's he's sort of been playing like mixed teams, but do you wanna know what the last time he played in a professional team was? If I had to guess, I'd say early twenty eighteen. Uh well not quite that far back. But oh. last time he played in a professional team on HL T V. Mm-hmm. Is uh, it was G two on the seventeenth of March last year. Hmm. That's a long time to be away from the pro scene. Uh, he was playing in a mixed team with Tuanu, who was a part of the LDLC before. Yeah. And Matt Hend. Okay. Uh, He's definitely going to be rusty then. And that was that that mixed team was actually had Afru in it as well. Mm hmm And the fifth player of that mixed team was a guy called Mike. Who do you have you heard of the uh Aces Republic of Gamers tournaments? Yes, yep, yep, I know those. Uh yeah, he that French YouTuber, uh where no one can say his name. Who <laughs> Uh his team yep. com his team had Mike in it in the last tournament they had. Alright. And he didn't look too bad, Piffer. He played uh, my position on train as the Bianca. Mm -hmm. So he had a lot of work to do, to be fair to him. Yeah. I mean, um, I wonder if LDLC were watching that tournament closely then for potential people to replace their two dropped. Um, because the, 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 I wonder if they had been planning the whole thing in advance. They decided they were going to drop those two players, 
and then they spotted out uh, Body and Afri playing um, in the Asus tournament, and that's when they decided, okay, let's pick those two up. Uh, they they didn't play in that tournament. No. No. Uh, it was just hmm. Mike from that team that played in that tournament. Ah. Well, I don't, well, whatever roster, whatever tournament it was that that roster played, I wonder if LDLC were watching it. Uh, there's, there's, a called, if, there's a guy called. There's a guy called. I wonder if it was like planned in, like. in advance and they, they were like actively looking, or if it was like a, they were, they it was a sudden drop and then they had to go back, and look for options based on the vods. You know, I, I wonder if it was like they were actively looking and watching live, or if they had to kind of. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's try to look because I swear, um, Misuta. Yeah, in the. 2019 uh, Republic of Gamers tournament, Masuta played for the French team. Okay. With EF. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Everyone's just calling him EF now because of his Valorant attack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it'll be interesting to see how Body does back mm. in a professional team. Yeah. But LDLC are in the Advanced League. They're not even in MDL. Ooh. Big oof. Yeah, they've really fallen from grace from when they had mm. likes of Kenny S. Yeah, let's, uh... Not the sort of news you want to be having associated with your organisation. No. <laughs> uh, but we do... Rather than getting dropped, we do have someone else not being a part of the team anymore. Uh, and that's Hiko. Yeah, because he's uh, moving off over to... Va he's trying to make a build a Valorant roster, isn't he? Yeah. He's uh, again. another NA player moving to Valorant. Oh, he would have thought. <laughs> <laughs> It's all it is is all the NA players. They're salty as fuck because they can't win any majors because yeah. all the EU so, CS:GO teams. But something I found out still, yeah. is there is two Counter Strike scenes that has been decimated when it comes to talent because of Valorant. Yeah, that's NA and the UK scene. <laughs> because I guess we're just the saltiest. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently we seem to be doing somewhat okay actually in Valorant. It's like can't win versus EU teams, so let's just move to a new game where there isn't really an established meta yet, and hope that we win. <laughs> yeah, well, there was a there was a tournament recently where a UK team won, mm -hmm. and they beat NIP in the final 2-0. Oh wow! Hmm. So maybe we have found our uh, FPS eSport that doesn't contain lots of RNG in the form of COD. Yeah, I mean, I mean to be fair, like, I was half good at CS:GO and also kind of half decent at finding bugs in CS:GO. I'm pretty good at Valorant, and I'm pretty good at finding bugs in Valorant. So maybe yeah. there's a direct correlation in how good you are at a game and how many bugs you can find. I don't know. <laughs> possibly, possibly. Uh, could, be yeah, my, could be my thing. It'll be sad to see Hiko go. I think from CS. Mm. Well, we'll always have uh, good old that Anders clip in Human Reactions to remember him by. Yeah, that that clip was incredible. Mhm. Mm that was like that was like one of the clips when I was starting to get into CS:GO and into the pro scene. Where it was like that was one of the clips where people were like you must know this to like be cultured and things. Mhm. Mm and then watching it back like several years later, it's like, yep, that's insane. Yeah. I, I can only hope to repeat that. I think I did something similar to it once, like a 180 flick. I, it was on um. It, it was on Mirage playing, uh, McDonald's Arch, near short. Mm. I was holding off a B rush, and I just two tapped. Well, I got two one taps on. Uh, it was a pistol round. Two one taps on T's rushing through the halls through the window. 
and then I heard a flashbang being bounced off the wall behind me for a guy trying to push short. So I just waited until it had gone off and then 180 one tapped the guy who was peeking after the flash. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my my own so the closest one I've got to copying that clip, uh, w again was on Mirage, mm -hmm. and uh, it was only a ninety degree flip though. Yeah, but I had an op and I was running out ramp, mm -hmm. and he was that close ramp. Yeah, and with that, no scoping, I I just w ran out and just ninety degree flick no scope. <laughs> You must have been so mad. <laughs> Imagine if you'd done that like after the um, update with, with the, the death notifications to show whether it's a no scope or not. It was it was actually fairly recent, but unfortunately it was uh, before that update. That would have really tilted them. That, yeah. That's the one thing I do like about that update. Like if you hit if if you go for no scopes for a few rounds and you hit one of them. Like through us, through through the smoke no scope sort of thing, and yeah. that definite vision comes up. It's it's inevitably gonna tilt them a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the blind notification as well. Yeah, like getting killed by a guy who's like full blind by your flash, and he just gets a lucky shot. That's got to be tilting. Yeah, but it's like um, playing as part of the team today. Uh, I went to solo peak ramp on Vertigo. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'd, I'd thrown like the the smoke down, like the deep ramp smoke, so it was fairly safe. However, yeah. I did have about three flashes lobbed my way, <laughs> and I just shot the guy blind and just ran back. <laughs> oh damn! Were you orping? Uh yeah. Ah. Uh, it's sort of, it's been it's been an interesting development with the team because it's sort of we had an orper, and I was fine to just be rifling. And then yeah. he stepped down, and it sort of transitioned to anyone but me up CT side and I up T side. Yeah. And now it sort of transitioned into just literally anyone ops T uh, CT side. <laughs> oh wow! So is it like a finders keepers rule on CT side? Whoever ends up with the op at the end of the round, depending on who dies and picks it up. Uh, keeps it's. The next one. A little bit of that, and a little bit of spawns. if you're feeling it, and a little bit of spawns. Yeah. Uh, I think in one of the Vertigo games today, we literally did have four different Orpers on CT side. <laughs> uh, but moving on from Hiko retiring. Yep. Uh, someone we briefly mentioned last week, who... Um, Made a great decision in signing for a Mongolian team. Yeah. Smuya. Yeah. Uh, he's now been released from his contract. Oh dear. He's... Oh, that didn't last long. He's no longer tied to the organization. Oh, did they catch him drinking before 11 o'clock? Possibly. <laughs> uh, but then again, he wasn't going to play for the team anyway, so... Hmm. That's interesting. I'm open to all offers, EU and NA. Good luck getting an NA team with the current pandemic. I'm just imagining, um, like, uh, just smoother, like in a homeless <laughs> sort of scenario, sitting on the street, and it's like, will 360 no scope for, for a Big Mac? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, I, I say good luck getting an NA team with the current pandemic. I do mm. remember a time when uh, Smuya stood in for an NA team during like a closed qualifier or an open qualifier. But he was in the UK. Oh. <laughs> so he's just sat in like his room in like 1am on 120 ping playing a professional game. Damn. <laughs> That's what you call dedication. Lol. That's nuts. Uh, one free agent to another free agent, and technically sticking to the UK. Mm -hmm. Uh, a guy called Tudson. Right. Uh, he's Polish. Okay. Uh, he was playing for Team Secret. Right. And apart from that, the only other notable thing, uh, he's 
been a part of was one of the Aces Republic of Gamers tournaments for Team Henry G. Ha. Huh. So he's he's Polish British, but unlike Mantu, he doesn't want to use the Union Jack. Wow. Well, he's uh, cle clearly delusional. <laughs> yes, uh, the Union Jack is a much better flag than the, the yeah. Polish flag. Uh, side note: This is sarcasm. It's humour. It's not actually <laughs> supposed to be xenophobic or racist in any way. Um, no, yeah. I mean, like, if I met the guy and offered him a cup of tea, and he like off asked for coffee instead, I, I would just never talk to him again. <laughs> you know, tea is an important factor. Yeah, that is true. Mm. Uh, so and, the reason... and, it's not, and it's not just whether you drink it, it's how as well. If he asks for it without milk, oh, no. Nah. Yeah, that's nah. that's a no-go. No. Uh, so the reason he has left uh, Team Secret was because he wanted to pick up primary or roles again. Okay. But I the... mean, fair enough. If you want to play a specific role, you've got to shop around. Yeah, but the team is sticking with uh, Israeli Anarkas in the primary role position. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, Israel is so good at opping. Yeah. Um, I mean, I mean it, make, it makes sense. Uh, so Team Secret has... Well, one, they've got Percy on the team, who's Danish. Right. Uh, but then they've got Juan Flatru and Synopsy, who they have... Albanian flags on the HLTV profile. Right. But I do remember those two playing for a team that was in an Asian minor at one point and they had a different flag. But I can't remember what the flag was. Interesting. It... What, maybe maybe it was a case of uh, like political tensions between the two countries so they just changed the flags that those two players are from so they didn't look like they were from Albania for that tournament. So the Asians wouldn't get mad at them or something? I don't know. Maybe. I I do remember it was like a Middle Eastern country that's classed as sort of like Asia. Right. So the team technically was a, an Asian team, but I, yeah, they're currently down as Albanian. Right. That Yeah, that's confusing. That's a bit of a mindfuck. <laughs> I mean, Albania is like, um, yeah, like relative to the rest of Europe it's close but it's not really that close to the Middle East yeah it's closer to Greece you know it's... Uh, so we have some Brazilian CS news that doesn't contain a fear or a MIBR right <laughs> uh, Detona of, uh, they went down to uh, two players when they had three leave mm -hmm. uh, they signed in veteran player Mac as the IGL Okay. Uh, he was on Sharks for a while, and then was on a team on Red Canids with FNX. Huh. And the guy's like thirty-two or something, so he's he's very experienced. Just not. That's just a polite way of saying old. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> he's he's experienced, just not at the 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 tier yeah. one scene. Uh, but. This is one of the Brazilian teams that has an academy team, so the second player that's come in is actually from the academy team. Alright. And then they sign... That, so that guy's Zevi. Bit of a weird name. Like uh, Z-E-V-Y. Yeah, Z like like X, X-E-V-Y. It's Z-E-V-Y. Oh, okay. What does that even... Why? Um... You know, it's like the the Portuguese, Spanish, so sort of that South American way of saying it's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. And I was actually going to send you this person's name to see what you think of the pronunciation. Right. Uh, so he's come from Keed, who's another Brazilian team. They've done. A, they're well known in the Brazilian scene, but they're not exactly well known internationally. Mm -hmm. uh, but this guy is. His name is spelled P I R I A Z one N. Periazin? Could be. I, I was thinking that. It could be Pyriazin as well. Yeah. 
Or maybe the I is supposed to be like an E sound and it's like Perry isn't. Oh, the mix of those sounds is in the middle rather than the first one. Is it Piraisin? Yeah. Uh, unless we ask the guy, I don't think we'll ever know. Huh. Yeah, it's... Or, uh, okay, alternative theory. He just doesn't know how to spell Persian. <laughs> <laughs> could be, could be. Uh, but Never he... Know. The past three months, he's had a 1.13 rating, so that's why Detona's picked him up. Well, that's pretty decent, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, most of that is also against Brazilian teams, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, so next uh, roster change uh, is a team has just gotten rid of their roster. Right. Uh, existence, the... Um, I think the Spanish organization no longer exists. Uh, they were <laughs> <laughs> technically they do no longer exist. Um, wow. But so they had a Spanish roster, and then yeah. they had Existence Galaxy, which is a Swedish roster, which is where Plopsky and Nock team together before Nip. Yeah. Uh, they then got rid of the Galaxy team. Uh -huh. And then their Spanish roster became an Argentinian roster. That's a bit of a jump. But they're still playing in EU. What? <laughs> so they were they were doing like Iberian qualifiers and stuff. And... What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wait. I'm confused. Spanish. To Algerian, uh, Ar Argentinian, you, not Algerian, and then Argentinian. they're playing Liberia. Okay, yeah, I mean, so whatever. I mean, diversity, right? So all five of them speak Spanish because four of them are from a South American country, which is a Spanish colony Spanish in the past. Yeah. yeah. Um. But the yeah, they're playing in Europe rather than South America. Huh. Because, you know, it's easier to move four people over to Europe than it is to move one person over to South America. Uh, yeah, I mean, in perfect logical sense, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I, from, like, a standpoint of opponents, I can see why they did it. Right. Because, obviously, Europe is a much more competitive team. Much more competitive team, team yeah. Uh, so you've got, like, a lot more... Uh, trials and tribulations to kind of and yeah. obstacles to put in their in their way to test them with, as but, opposed to just you know like the, the, what's the worst threat you can throw them up against in in South America MIBR, which is like a laughing stock right now for so yeah. yeah. Uh, but the main reason uh, existence has dropped their roster mm -hmm. is because the organization has been bought out by another Counter Strike organization, which is Giants. Okay. Uh, for an undisclosed fee. Hmm. Not affiliated with the San Francisco Giants? No, I don't believe so. Alright. Um, so, Existence Executive Staff will be integrated into the parent company. Mm -hmm. And I believe it said somewhere Yeah. Uh, that the current Vodafone Giants team in CS... Mm -hmm. will rebrand into the existence name. Hmm. So they're doing the old switcheroo. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. I wonder where exist existence is, like, old roster will end up then. Like, whether they'll just disperse and end up in different teams, or whether they'll just all move together into a new org. Yeah, or whether they go back home. Yeah, just <laughs> never play again. Hang up the mouse and keyboard. Go and get a real nine to five. Uh, but the the Vodafone Giants team contains Fox. Mhm. Mm that's that's about it for notable players in that team. Right. But We're it was like nobody's. It was like at the end of 2019 or something. They dropped their entire roster except for Fox to build another new team around Fox. <laughs> after having already previously done that. Oh no. <laughs> And apparent, 
I was I was uh, looking on like the HLTP forums, and from what I've seen based on comments around Vodafone Giants, is they're basically the laughing stock of the Iberian CS scene at the moment. Oh, so it's basically like um, if MIBR had tried to build a team around Fallen, sort of thing. <laughs> it's basically what's happened. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, it's uh. I wouldn't be surprised if this next roster just disbands and Fox leaves altogether to try and find <laughs> an, an already established team. That That's probably likely to happen. Uh, so, Copenhagen Flames have now found a replacement for Farleg. Okay. Uh, a guy called Hectors. Never heard of him? <laughs> Neither had I. Apparently, he played under Hunden in Tricked back in 2016. Okay, so he's probably picked up some experience from him. Yeah, uh, his most recent team was with AGF, which is that uh, football on team which Christo came from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm assuming he's stepping into the AWP role, since Farleg is an AWP. Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, can you find out what position he played on Tricked when Hundam was there? Uh, probably not. Hmm. Uh, but past three months, he's averaged a 1.11 rating. That's decent. Yeah. Uh, and his first games are going to be against Forts, OG, and Team Secret. Hmm. Yeah, so that, that'll be a bit of a test then. See if he can beat some, uh, one of the top 30s. Yeah, he's actually, uh, one of the other Copenhagen Flames players actually played on AGF with Hectos. Hmm. So, he does know one of his, uh, teammates already. Right. He's, uh... Okay, so there'll be a bit of chemistry there for him to kind of vibe with. Yeah, uh... I don't know why he went with, uh, Hectos, like, it's got H-E-C-T-O as in, like, Hector. Mm hmm And then a Z. Huh. His name's Hector Jensen. Where's the Z come from? Uh, maybe he's Gen Z. Uh, maybe. Uh, he's maybe. 22. So depending on your views, he's either Gen Z or Millennial. Right. Uh, personally, in my views, because this includes us, uh, Millennial. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I remember, I remember seeing like a meme at one point where it was like, uh, 2003 onwards is Gen Z. Yeah. Uh, 1995 and backwards is Millennial. Right. And then anything in between is an honorary member of the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I'll take, to be honest. I, I did like the Black Eyed Peas. Yeah. I mean, I've got a feeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so something we mentioned briefly before is the second RMR event. Yep. Uh, which is going to be held by CS Summit. Oh, okay. So basically it's going to be scuffed but funny content. <laughs> yeah. Um, they So there's not going to be a, a second event for Asia and Oceania. Okay. Uh, so I guess technically those spots are locked in now. Mm -hmm. uh, but CIS is going to have their own event, and then CS Summit is holding a Europe event and an NA event. Ha. Huh. I, I mean, actually, to be fair, that makes sense, considering how it's all going to have to be online. The fact that they'll do an EU one and an NA one for ping purposes, it's the smart yeah. way to go about it, I suppose. Uh, so the team's locked into the close qualifier for EU. Mm -hmm. Is Fnatic, Complexity, Endpoint, Big, Sprout, Mad Lions, Contact, Dignitas, OG, Heroic, and Harvu. Hmm. I'm kind of interested to see how Dignitas put um pull together in that 
considering they were one of the kind of star teams earlier on um, in 2015 to 2016. Yeah. Before they... You'll, uh, uh, you'll find it funny that Fnatic and co Complexity are in the close qualify when I tell you the team's in the group stage. Right. So... Starting off somewhat simple, we've got G2, Ents, Heretics, North, Mouse Sports, Copenhagen Flames, Vitality, Phase, Nip, Godsent, and Movie Star Riders. Oh. <laughs> Is that out of nowhere then? <laughs> Movie Star Riders have been invited to the actual event and not the close qualifier. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh. That's got a sting for Fnatic then, considering they were, what, uh, third? Uh, yeah, they're, they're third in the HLTV rankings. Wow. Oh, gosh. How did they work that one out? <laughs> Good question. Uh, I guess it probably had something to do with the fact that Movie Star Writer has actually beat Hero uh, Fnatic at Road to Rio to take yep. 11th place, I think. I mean, it would all, all come down to different uh, point systems, won't it? Like, obviously, yeah. the HLTV ranking system is going to have a different point system but than what the, uh, the the qualifier brackets will have. Yeah. Uh, good to see Endpoint in there, though. Mm hmm Getting some uh, UK recognition that isn't Mantu. Or Sprout. Uh, well, Sprout has a German-slash-Polish lineup. Even though it's a UK org, isn't it? Yeah. It might be a UK org, I think. Can't remember. Pretty sure it was. Yeah, they have uh, Snatchy and Deitcher on that lineup. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so. I wonder if I, I wonder if I'm just thinking of Snappy or if I actually recognise the name Snatchy from somewhere. Uh, he did play for... I think he's played for Vertus Pro in the past. I think he played for AGO. Oh, yeah, I'm remembering him from VP, 100%. Uh, so, in Europe, every team except one of the teams that have got major ranking points have been invited to either the qualifier or the group stage. Of course, the one exception being Astralis. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, it's in part because if they participate in this event with uh, Snappy, yeah, they lose a further twenty percent, which would add up to forty percent of the points they have currently. So they're just banned from partaking because they're too good. Uh, but it's then it would be another 20% for every further change as well. So if they play the Major with Glaive and Zipex, they, if they want to do that, they'd lose like 80% of the points. Damn. So it, it's basically just not worth it for Astralis to compete. Yeah. I, it, it's a bit like, um, you remember those old multiple choice uh, exams you used to take, where it's like the first... One to thirty questions. If you get anything wrong, you don't lose marks for it. Yeah, so you yeah. might, might at least guess. And then, like the last ten, if you guess wrong, you lose two marks. Yeah. So it's like you'd only answer the ones you were sure on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as I said before, apparently they're like seven hundred and fifty points ahead of second place in the rankings, so they don't really yeah. need to partake in this anyway. Mm. Plus the fact of what's going on with their roster at the moment, it, it's a smart choice to just completely avoid that entire kerfuffle. Yeah. Uh, there is five spots available for the open qualifier. Oh, can I take one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I literally, I've... I recognise a couple of names, but the only sort of big names in that first page... Uh, alternate attacks, mm. uh, Sangali spots, right, and Team Secret. Okay. And uh, there's there's another page, but I'm just not gonna bother looking at ESEA anymore. <laughs> um. So from that completed list, 
after we get five from the open qualifier into the closed qualifier. Mm. Uh, there's then five spots available for the group stage. Right. And there's only 125,000 up for grabs. Oof. <laughs> not a massive prize. I mean, yeah, it's still a lot of money, but compared to other CS tournaments, that's not a massive amount. Especially compared to the fact that this is qualification for the Major, which has a 2 million prize pool. Yeah. Uh, it's so a bit crazy. Moving on to North America. Maybe, maybe they don't want the prize pool of that qualification road, like, overshadowing some of the major prize winnings. Because, like, if you imagine the first place prize for qualifying to get into the major, it's, like, twice as much as coming second in the major. It's, like, it wouldn't really make sense. Yeah. So that might be why they're not having that much money in the pot. Uh, so moving on to North America. Mm -hmm. In the close qualifier, we have Cloud9, MIBR, Yeah, Envy, and Triumph. Ha. Huh. Okay. So tri Triumph is starting to rise up now. We said it last week. Yeah, yeah. They have been popping up a lot more frequently now. Yeah. Uh, uh, they have moved up one place in the rankings from 50th to 49th. Hmm. Who knows, maybe they'll just start snowballing and Virtus plow their way to the number one spot. Man, imagine if they, like, snuck into the major and then just dominated it. <laughs> yeah, they just throw an upset like Ents against Astralis. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be, that'd be something special. Now, then we need another song, like, Easy for Triumph, but something that actually works. <laughs> uh, so, uh, there's uh, three open qualifier spots for NA. Mm -hmm. And then... In the group stage currently is Team Liquid, 100 Thieves, EG, Furia, and Genji. Furia Fur and Genji in that same bracket? Uh, there's no brackets revealed at the moment. It's just like the teams. Well, if Furia gets ma get matched up against Genji, that would definitely be an interesting watch. Could be, yeah. I just like the fact that Benta is playing for a team not in Asia. <laughs> for once. <laughs> yeah. But, am I, like, do you remember that when Excurit was on Tyloo? And yeah, Benta yeah. literally had to call in three languages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he'd have to, like, he'd be like, we're going B, and then, like, he'd say it again twice, but in not two other languages. <laughs> That's that's impressive. That mm. there's there's no other way you can describe it. Just having to literally um, call in three languages. There is another way you can describe it, actually. What? Uh, in inconvenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. That is true. It is inconvenient. But it it must have took the pressure off when like it was just him and Exker at left, and he can just yeah. ah yes, I can I speak in my own language for once. He's like rambling to himself. Think he's he's like during the timeout. He's sitting there rambling to himself. Like should be force, but the last team they got the bomb plant down last round, so they could be getting a buy. And now, uh, if we force now, we could just be going into their force buy, and then we would end up losing anyway. So we're probably better off saving. And then the rest of his teammates are just listening to him rambling in his language, not understanding. Like has he lost his mind? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I mean, when when they had extra, uh, he could have like ping back and forth during his runs with Excra and now it's like before he left the team it was literally four Chinese players and Benta so he's probably just sat in timeouts to say yeah okay so this is a thing we could do but then there's obviously this thing that happened the round before yeah and everyone in the team is just like huh <laughs> um yeah, I know what you're saying. And then, it's like, and then it's like 30 seconds remaining he starts explaining it and then they're <laughs> like is that what all that rambling was about <laughs> It's like, uh, basically. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like ramble, ramble, ramble for like 50 seconds of the timeout, and then like the last 10 seconds, it's like, we're doing an A split. And they're like, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> uh, but the, the, the NACS Summit only gets $75,000. Oh, now. Uh. 
And well, of course, enough to wipe your tears with, that's, I suppose. Uh, that's split amongst eight teams. Oh. I mean, it's still enough notes to wipe your tears with <laughs> about how small the price pool is, but still. Yeah. Uh, so we're now done with news and stuff. Mm. Uh, moving on to uh, results and things. Mm -hmm. Which which window is it? It's this one, I think. It is this one. So where we left off last week, there was two games left of the group stage in DreamHack uh, Spring for EU and NA. Mm -hmm. uh, as we said before, Nip two old ends. Yeah. Uh, Godsent, I believe, didn't win a single game because they got beat by Spirit. Ouch. <laughs> the, the, the God, the Father, got beaten by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Trinity having a little bit of a civil war. <laughs> uh, but as a, as a Nip fan, it was great to see Nip edge out against Ents and sneak into the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, inter that's interesting. Um, it's almost like two subpar teams got battling it out. It's like, it's like two wounded dogs yeah. having a dog fight. It's like, which it's like it's not it's not really a case of which one's gonna win the fight. It's like which one's gonna last longest, and which one's gonna succumb succumb to its wounds first, sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, EG got mucked mm -hmm. out of their group in NA. Ouch. Tarek they... is not a happy bunny right now, I can tell you that. <laughs> they lost 2-1 to Cloud9. He's they... definitely not a happy bunny. <laughs> they lost 2-1 to Gen G. Oh, and wow. then they they beat 100 Thieves 2-1. Hmm. Which we both predicted. Because uh, yeah. that game was going on last week as we were recording. We both predicted 100 Thieves to win that. Oh, right. <laughs> so, good to know our prediction was accurate. Mm. I, it did come down to the third map like we predicted, but All right. apparently EG... So, we're not quite analyst desk worthy, but we're getting there. We're, we are getting there, but Nuke did go to overtime as the third map, so... I called that, yeah. It was, no. <laughs> it was close, and you did call the overtime. Yeah. Um... I, I kind of want to do Blast uh, NA first, before the EU showdown. Mm -hmm. Because of one of the teams in this. Uh, Triumph. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Th are you ready for this stat? Okay, yeah. So excluding the game that's currently going on now between them and I believe Gen G. Okay. Um, with the whole 15-15 tie situation, yeah. the max rounds Triumph could have played was 90. Okay. They played 89. <laughs> so they've tied a lot of games is what you're telling they me. They beat Cloud9 16-13. Right. They tied against 100 Thieves. Right. And they tied against EG. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, oh man! And this time, a hundred, a uh, hundred thieves was the team to get knocked out. Mm. E.g., uh, top the group instead. Damn. And Cloud Nine didn't tie a single game. They're the only team in that group not to tie. Well, rip them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then in the other group was Furia, MIBR, Genji, and Chaos. It's it's weird to it's weird to think that we're now like comparing Cloud 9s performance to that of some tier two teams like Genji and Chaos. <laughs> like, not two years after they win a major. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. weird. It's like how quickly has that gone? Yeah, but oh, okay. So MIBR also played eighty nine rounds in the group stage. Huh. 
Wow. So did they tie a lot of games as well, or were they getting sixteen fourteens? Uh, they beat Furious sixteen thirteen. They then tied to Chaos, and then the game which I previously spoke about, which was when I was wanting to look at Genji's facilities, they tied fifteen fifteen. Hmm. Damn. I still don't like the fact that their that tie results are allowed. It should be having overtimes. It, yeah, I, I agree. I I definitely agree. Yeah. Like if it's something like a league table, uh, format thing like ESL, pro league sort of thing, then tie is fine because it's all points based anyway. But when it's a tournament format, yeah. You gotta have overtimes because it's so, it all depends on knockouts and stuff. So there was only four games in the group stage that uh, wait is it even four? No, it's three games. Three games in the group stage mm -hmm. didn't have a score line that was sixteen twelve or closer. Ha! <laughs> wow. That was Furia beating Chaos sixteen five. Wow. Furia beating Gen G sixteen eight. <laughs> and Gen G beating Chaos 16-8. It's like rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except Furia is both rock and paper. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, currently, as I said before, Gen G is facing against Triumph in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, that has gone down to the third map. Okay. Uh, just let's let me quickly just skip over to the match page. Uh, something I should mention, by the way, they none of them has done amazing, amazing. But Junior has had a really consistent tournament. He's been at the top for the Triumph for the entire tournament. Didn't know you had a kid playing in that team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Junior, yeah. Junior, yeah. No, he's, uh, he's he's nineteen. He's he's, he's everybody's son. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Mirage was Gen G's pick, and it was sixteen fourteen. To uh, Gen G. Yep. Okay. Uh, Triumph picked Nuke. Yep. And it was nineteen seventeen. Oof. And it's currently Inferno, which is thirteen seven to Triumph. Ooh. However, Triumph is now on the T side. Hmm, I don't know. If you uh, if you get that early round banana control T side and you start getting that, if if you are able to start running mind games in the A apartments to the point where the the CTs don't even want to take A apps control uh, early round, and you can get banana control early round as well, you can start to really play some mind games and dominate that map on even on the T side. So. Yeah, so um, Triumph won the pistol in this T side, uh, and then they mm -hmm. converted. Uh, but if you want to talk about mind games, um, Gen G literally just won an eco round. This, I thought you were going to say, if you want to talk about mind games, this is where I tell you I haven't been recording this whole time. This <laughs> <is correct. laughs> that, that would be uh, the ultimate uh, Sheldon Big Bang Theory bazinga. Yeah, <laughs> I think I would just leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, we we have been recording. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, I definitely wouldn't do that intro without having already clicked record. I... <laughs> too embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, so Genji literally just went in eco round, and then they got the opening pick in the next round as well. Nice. Uh, there's a guy called Curry on Triumph. Curry? Curry, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so you've got Junior and Curry. Yep. What's the, re what's the rest of them? Uh, Grim. Grim, okay. Uh, oh, great. I, I, I already clicked off it and uh, Triumph isn't in this tournament that I'm on right now. And I've just misspelt the name. Great. This is going great. <laughs> <laughs> Triumph. Okay, so we got Grim Junior Curry, who mm -hmm. Curry is actually of Indian descent by the looks of things. Okay. Uh, then we got Shakezilla. Sorry, what? Shake, <laughs> what was that Shakezilla. Shakezilla. Zilla. 
Zoa, okay. Z Zola. Zola. Z wow. I feel like I just met a European person. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Spongy. Oh, right, yep, Spongy. Okay. Great, Junior. Mm. There's an easy way to remember a few of their names. Junior bought a Grim Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, apparently they peaked at 35th huh. in the rankings. Hmm. They then dropped 8 places, then 2, then 5. And now they're trying to climb back up. So they were 50th pretty much. Yes, they were. Ah, damn. Good quick math. Quick, yeah, quick math. Unlike, um... <laughs> I was going to say, unlike someone like Jake Peralta. <laughs> It's quick, but it's not accurate. <laughs> yeah. What's 9 plus 10? 21. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was quick, but not accurate. Yeah. Uh, so, moving on to Europe's Blast Showdown. Astralis won one game. Damn. <laughs> wow, Blast Astralis really has uh, I was, um... eaten the dust. I'm assuming I'm correct in saying who. Uh, let's see. Yep, they lost to. Obviously, they lost to Nip 16-7. They lost to Vitality 16-6. They lost to Ents 16-13. Um. Uh, and then they beat Saw, which is a Spanish Portuguese mm. Portuguese team. Uh, 16-4. Okay. However, they did play today in the playoffs, and they got two odd by my spots. Mm, I mean, that's to, that's to be expected, uh, given how stable and consistent the team my spots is. Yeah. Against uh, Astralis in their current condition. Yeah. So Astralis is now out. Dignitas is out as well. They went one and three in the group stage as well. And the team, the team getting knocked out in the group stage alongside Portuguese team Saw was Vertz Pro. Huh. And then Vitality uh, beat Dignitas in the playoffs just now. Oh wow! <laughs> well, I suppose again that's another expected result, really. Yeah, that one is fairly uh, expected. Mhm. Mm uh, so the games tomorrow for the playoffs is Ents Mouse Sports and Fnatic Vitality. The Ents Mouse Sports one could be close. Could be. Yeah, depends if Ents decide to come back to their major form. <laughs> or if Mouse Sports decide to come back to their Pro League Season 10 form. Yeah. Uh, and then it was Nip and Mad, Ni Mad Lions top their group. Hmm. So the winner of Ents Mouse Sports faces uh, Mad Lions, and winner of Fnatic Vitality faces Nip. Right. The the Fnatic Vitality game that's definitely going in the way of Vitality. Agreed. Uh, I can get behind that, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, just quickly looking over to at the uh, game again. It's now thirteen ten. Gen G is coming back. They've won four in a row. Oh dear. Yeah. Uh, so apart from that, the only sort of main tournaments coming up in the near future is the two Blast Finals. Of which the uh, America's Finals currently has one team attending. Huh. Team Liquids, wow. that's it. So they just win by default, I suppose. Uh, yeah, well, you know, give them time for the the uh, showdown to finish. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that tournament has 250,000, by the way. Wow. <laughs> Easy and 50k per player. Thanks. Spot at the Global Finals. Which, there's two spots from Europe, and there's two... There's the Spring Finals, the Fall Finals, that's four. There's 
a spot from each of the American finals, so that's six. Right. And I don't think they've actually revealed where the other two teams come from. It's got to be Oceania and uh, Africa then, probably. Uh, I mean, it is global finals. Yeah. If I um, keep them one secret, I, I bet one of them's Africa. It's going to be like a surprise team. Could be. Uh, that tournament, by the way, the global finals, is scheduled for the January 18th to January 24th, 2021. Wow, okay. <laughs> wow, planning in advance, I suppose. Yeah, and it has a $1.5 million prize pool. Damn, almost. that's more than your average major. Yep, that is more than your average major. Well, I, I wonder if that's uh, their way of saying, Yo, Valve, if you can put $2 million into one major for 2020, you can do $2 million per major <laughs> for the two majors in a year, you know? Well, I mean, I what... they probably could. Hmm. Or at least bump it up to 1.5. Yeah. Because like, even then, even even if somebody argued, oh yeah, but Blast Pro is 1.5 as well, it's like, but yeah, there's only one Blast Pro Global per year and there's two majors per year, so. Jesus Christ, how much have I been added by the team? <laughs> I actually gave them warning this time as well. Like, I, I literally yeah. specifically told them we were doing this. <laughs> Uh, I've been at it like a million times. I see it. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Uh, Apparently so... Ben is watching the end of a movie. Oh. Uh, but yeah, no, then he's got the... It's uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, and then he's got the other two to watch, so it's going to be a, another eight hours yet before he's ready. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, do you have any more drama from the world of CS? Um, let's just let's just end on a bit of drama again. I mean, not 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 particularly. Uh, the only other thing I really spotted was about Shroud talking about how uh, crossplay in competitive games should be limited. You know, between keyboard and mouse versus controller, just because of the superior advantage uh, keyboard and mouse gets in certain games, and obviously. In racing games, the controller gets an advantage, so... Well, in racing uh, games, the steering wheel gets the advantage, but... Oh, yeah, obviously. But, uh, no, he was talking about how, like, for example, um, if Valorant was also to get, also to get a console release, then cross-play shouldn't be allowed. But, well, like, between PlayStation 4 and controller, sure, but not between keyboard and mouse and the consoles. Right. Because... What if... So, cross-play is available for all three right but there's two modes for the console version so there's console crossplay and then there's global crossplay mm, i can get behind that yeah and then like obviously for because actual pro scenes it will just be a case of keyboard and mouse versus keyboard and mouse and controller versus controller yeah or just keyboard and mouse or just keyboard and mouse yeah, because like if you're pro, it's gonna be keyboard and mouse. Yeah, uh, because like for both consoles, uh, you can use keyboard and mouse. Mm -hmm. So yeah, have like a console one where people play with controller, and then a global one where you play with keyboard and mouse. Mm -hmm. And then probably get instances of people using a keyboard and mouse in the console one, but that's to be expected anyway. Yeah. And I do actually remember playing COD uh, World War Two, mm -hmm. where that was that was the time when I was sort of playing in a team on Counter Strike, which was when it was two tone and not token gaming. Yeah. And playing in a team on COD as well. Hmm. Uh, and we came up against people using keyboard and mouse, and that wasn't fun, if I'm honest. I did see one where um, someone figured out, you know, there's that new mobile COD game? Yeah. Somebody figured out how uh, you can put a uh, emulator on your PC to play the mobile COD game on your PC with keyboard <laughs> and mouse. So you'll just be destroying kids trying to use, like, touchscreen controls and you're just running around keyboard and mouse. Nice. Just, yeah. uh, 
Especially if you're a CS player, just start just running around with like an awful yeah, thing. Yeah, like it's literally just like versus bots. That's literally what it is. Gotta love that. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, there is there is one more thing we haven't mentioned. Uh, yep. Skadoodle. Yes. Uh, his, Valorant, his Valorant move. Yeah. He's, he's making a Valorant effort. <laughs> <laughs> Not the greatest of puns, but we'll roll with it. <laughs> Uh, so he is the fifth member of Team One, which makes it a primarily I buy power roster. Yeah, because I picked up Braxton. I mean, the recent, well, not recent, but past uh, scandals suggest that maybe it's not the best of ideas, but Brax I, at least is matured. Honestly, I think, I think it's great. I think it's a second chance for this kind of chemistry, because like I by power, we're a powerhouse. Scar and yeah. Rax and Days all on the same side. Obviously, Days is completely retired from pro gaming now, but to see Scar and Brax working together again in an FPS game, oh yeah, and they've got like, just, uh, they've got AZK as well. Mm, I'm just imagining like scenarios where Brax would be playing as Phoenix or something and then Scar is like literally playing on his hip and they're getting ready to rush a bomb site. Uh Brax is like throwing in a flashbang and then go and then he goes out and then Scar is literally right behind him with the op. Um you know? Yeah. Like they, they would just be aggressive as fuck. I wonder like, uh, if uh, the Valorant pro scene is going to have something similar to League of Legends where you ban certain agents. I don't think that will happen until they have a wider variety of agents to choose from because at the moment there's only eight so. Is that including the new one that came with release? Uh, yes I believe so. I just... I think so. yeah. I Sage. just have no clue when it comes to the numbers Omen. for things like that. Uh, Omen, uh, Archer guy, I can't remember his name. Uh, Jet, Phoenix, Brimstone, Breach, and Raised. Yeah, so no, there's nine. There's nine total. Archer guy, Silver. <laughs> uh, but the 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 reason I was bringing that up was because if there's someone that is good mechanically mm -hmm. and masters the abilities of Omen. Yeah. That team is going to be unstoppable. Oh, absolutely. Or even if they, like, I'd, I'd say one of the more mechanically based ones to master would be someone like Jet, you know? Like, yeah. lining up the, the, the boosts and stuff. So, like, there's, there's definitely going to be situations like the strafe boosts that you can do. If you line yourself up in a corner and you face a certain way and then you boost sideways, you're instantly like in the sight of a pixel angle ready to tap shoot someone in the head sort of thing, you know? Yeah. But it's like, the difference between the two of them is Jet, if you want to play aggressive and try and get into an unexpected angle, mm -hmm. you have to physically dash across, whereas Omen, you can teleport. And yeah, they will have you, no you idea you've moved. Peak. Yeah. And uh, I was I remember seeing a clip uh, where he was in a 1v5 situation, he had an op, he had his ultimate ability, and he was mm. just running back towards A, he got a couple of kills, and the other three were literally still converging on him, and then he ulted mm. back to the B site and planted. Yeah, and they were obviously confused as to how the fuck he planted on B already. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Maybe that's something I'll need to do to nerf Omen. I'll make it so that his ult doesn't allow him to carry the spike with him or something. That could be a cool idea. Yeah. It's like he he could plant A, and then he could use his ult, but he could use it just to get behind the enemy players coming in, rather yeah. than using it to get all the way across the map to the other bomb site, sort of thing. It kind of nerfs it a bit, but it's still useful. Yeah. I do like though if you uh, if you spot where he's ulting to, you can shoot him as he's teleporting in, and he goes back to where he was. Yeah. Although you might as well just wait for him to finish teleporting him and then headshot him before he can react. 
That is true, but he can uh, see you as he's teleporting in. Yeah, but he's um, immobile and can't shoot but before you can shoot him. There's there's a bit of time where you can shoot him and he can't shoot you. So Yeah, if you time it right, it will it would be good to hear. Uh, so I think we've exhausted our rambling again. Yeah, definitely. For another week. <laughs> would you like to do the outro again? Ah, uh, I mean, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? So, yes, guys, once again, if you have enjoyed the Free to Scope podcast, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button to get uh, weekly content just like this. We'll be back hopefully again next week with another podcast that's hopefully um, not as long. <sighs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, and hit hit the like button as well if you enjoyed listening, and uh, make, sh- make sure you're subscribed to Viper. Um, and also, uh, I'm just going to shamelessly plug my channel, Waged a British Kid, on YouTube. And uh, until next time, peace. See you later. <laughs>